subscribe and click the notification bell to stay updated with the latest videos from School of Technology Management and Engineering NMIMS Indore. With this, we will now begin our session of Introduction to Artificial Intelligence and Machine Learning Using Python. By our session experts for today, Mr. Dhruv Chen and Mr. Jay Sarodi, students from BTEC Computer Engineering, third year STME NMIMS Indore. The prerequisites are shared in the chat box, which you will have to open in your browser during the session. Hope you all enjoyed the session. Over to you, Dhruv and Jay. Thank you, Sachi, for the introduction. Learning is not attained by chance. It must be sought for with ardor and attended to with diligence. Hello everyone, I Dhruv Jain along with Jay Sarode, third year students of CSPH branch from the School of Technology, Management and Engineering, NMMS Indore, welcomes you all to the session on Introduction to AI ML using Python. We are very delighted to see you all here. Before starting with today's session, we would like to know what you all think about AI. So here is a poll for you all. Please open slido.com and write the code 247688 and then write your opinions and thoughts. The question for poll is, can you all define AI in one word? Please be fast. You have only 90 seconds to answer this question. Dhruv, did you notice that AI means different things to different people? Yes, for some it is future robotics and for others it may be evolutionary or machines brain or intelligence created by humans or artificial intelligence. But what really is artificial intelligence and what is machine learning? To get a basic teeny tiny idea, let's have a look at this video. Artificial intelligence at the highest level is the device being smart, how it becomes smart under the hood, then is the next layer of machine learning, which are the general techniques or a variety of techniques that are used to make that device smart. And then there's a further subset of algorithms or techniques called deep learning. Artificial intelligence is going to be used in everything. So I'll give you two examples. If a car has a intelligence built in, if it can see the world, so looking at what's on the road, looking at you as the driver, and being able to anticipate and course correct when something goes wrong, something jumps into the road. Autonomous vehicles of any kind are not going to be autonomous without artificial intelligence. Uh, in the medical field, new treatments that'll come from the analysis of reams of data to detect cancers and diseases. Today, machines are smart, and they're smart because of AI. But AI still has a dependency on us people. We're making it possible. The next phase is when artificial intelligence is able to walk on its own. Companies like Qualcomm, if we do our jobs right, and if artificial intelligence is done right, the actual implementation is totally transparent to a consumer. But what they end up with is devices in their world that are more than utilities. They're actually experiential, and they will make your life easier, more exciting. All right. That was a brief video to give you some idea about the topic of importance. But to have a deeper insight about it, let's study further. For some, AI is about artificial life forms that can surpass human intelligence. And for others, almost any data processing technology can be called AI. Though AI can have different meanings for different people, AI is currently a hot topic. Media coverage and public discussion about AI is almost impossible to avoid. It is the hottest buzzword in tech today, and all the major enterprises are using it to improve business. It is not only creating jobs across sectors, but also giving rise to new career paths in the field of machine learning, software development, testing, and automation. It is emerging as a field with applications and integrations with other fields like healthcare, retail, finance, marketing, etc., for learning and propelling careers across fields and technologies. 
artificial intelligence refers to the simulation of human intelligence in machines that are programmed to think like humans and mimic their actions in simple terms it is a branch of science which deals with helping machines find solutions to complex problems in a more human like fashion the term may also be applied to any machine that exhibits traits associated with a human mind such as learning and problem solving this generally involves borrowing characteristics from human intelligence and applying them as algorithms in a computer friendly way a more or less or efficient approach can be taken depending on the requirements established which influences how artificial the intelligent behavior appears so ai is how a device can be smart under the hood using a variety of techniques which is the next layer of machine learning ai is just like a magic where humans would just have to punch a button and all the activities will be performed by robot every time we work with ai we need to harness the benefit while minimizing the downsides by 2022 artificial intelligence could create about 58 million net new jobs artificial intelligence being an expanding field has a huge significance in the technological world in various ways like the first one is game playing the creative use of artificial intelligence in the world of gaming has led to a massive boom in the field the main objective of utilizing ai in gaming is to deliver a realistic gaming experience for players to battle against each other on a virtual platform ai in gaming also helps to increase the player's interest and satisfaction developing artificial environments by including virtual augmented and mixed reality seems to be the future of gaming industry the second is heuristic classification the terms simply means putting some information in a certain category using several other sources of information heuristic classification is suitable for classification problems in which it is known from experience which observations indicate required solutions and with what degree of certainty an example of this is how streaming applications like amazon prime video would suggest you to watch a show like the family man if it has information that you like the shows like mirzapur and patal lok next is speech recognition speech recognition applications have seen significant growth in recent times as businesses are increasing and adopting digital assistants and automated support for their services voice assistants smart home devices search engines etc are a few example where speech recognition has seen prominence advancements in technology have led to overcoming the challenges like variations in people's voices accents dialects context etc using ai apple google and amazon are among the tech giants who continue to use ai based speech recognition applications to provide an exemplary user experience well j i will tell you about an interesting 13 year old ukrainian boy eugene gustman who constantly tries to avoid answering questions by making jokes and changing the subject to his pet well which is bigger a shoe box or mount everest his reply was i can't make a choice right now i should think it out later and i forgot to ask you where you are from if a question like how many legs does an ant have is asked his answer was something between 2 or 4 maybe 3 oh what a fruitful conversation wait proof what do you think that i will be fooled i know that eugene goodsman in reality is a computer program who fooled out 10 out of 30 judges thinking he is a real person oh so you knew about him obviously who wouldn't he passed the turing test well let us tell you more about the famous turing test the turing test was given by alan turing who is considered to be the father of computer science in the test a human interrogator interacts with two players a and b by exchanging written messages via chat if the interrogator cannot determine which player a or b is a computer and which is human the computer is said to pass the test the argument is that if a computer is indistinguishable from from a human in a general natural language conversation then it, then it must have reached human level intelligence we have an upcoming poll for you all based on this euler diagram so please pay attention and make the most logical choice in this euler diagram 
A represents the main tech field, which is computer science. B depicts artificial intelligence that lies in the field of computer science. And E denotes data science. Data science in, is an umbrella term that includes machine learning and statistics. Certain aspects of computer science include algorithm, data storage, and web application development. Now you all might be wondering why I left out C and D. This is for you all to analyze and answer. Even if you're not sure, do answer because we will further discussing this concept. So here is a poll for you all. Please open slido.com and write the code 247688 and then choose the most suitable option. The question for poll is, can you all guess what C and D from the Euler diagram is? Please be fast. You have only 90 seconds to answer this question. Dhruv, can you notice? Most of them have guessed it right. So C is machine learning and D is deep learning. Well, both machine and deep learning are subsets of artificial intelligence, but deep learning represents the next evolution of machine learning. In machine learning algorithms, algorithms are created by human programmers and are responsible for parsing and learning from the data and they make decisions based on what they learn from the data. Whereas deep learning learns through an artificial neural network that acts very much like a human brain and allows the machine to analyze the data in a structure very much as humans do and does not require a human programmer to tell them what to do with their data. Concluding the Euler diagram, we can say that deep learning is the next evolution of machine learning, which in turn is said to be a subfield of AI, which itself is a subfield of computer science. We will meet and understand both of these concepts in more detail further into the session. Hey Jay, how do you think Disney captures and animates 3D rendered faces in movies? Well, it's relatively a massive task, but it is performed by Disney very easily using machine learning. Let us now dive right into it. Machine learning is a method of data analysis that automates analytical model building. It is the science of getting computers to act without being explicitly programmed and of teaching machines how to learn by themselves. Now, the question arises, why on earth would we want machines to learn by themselves? Well, do you remember last year during lockdown, we had to mop and clean our floor and our house? Yeah, how can I forget it? Initially, it was fine, but after doing it for a few days, I was so tired that I wished someone would do it for me, or maybe we could get a gadget out of Dorimon's pocket to do so. Well, what you think is possible? Haven't you heard that these days, there are robotic mop cleaners that detect whether the floor needs cleaning and mopping or not? And how much cleaning is required based on the condition of the floor and the type of the floor? Well, these machines can do the job without getting tired or sick. Oh, okay. Well, Jay, where else it is used? Unless you have been living under a rock, your life is already heavily impacted by machine learning. Let us look at a few examples when we can use the outcome of machine learning already in our daily life. The first one is face detection feature in smartphones. The second is social media sites recommending friends and ads. Third, Amazon recommending you the products based on your browsing history. And the last, most importantly, in banks to detect fraud transactions in real time. Well, these were some day-to-day -day uses of machine learning, now getting to some specific applications area of machine learning. Now that we have seen the application areas, why don't we learn the steps involved in building machine learning models? Any machine learning model development can broadly be divided into six steps. First is problem definition that involves converting a business problem to a machine learning problem. Second is hypothesis generation, it is the process of creating a possible business hypothesis and poten potential features for the model. Third is data collection, which requires us to collect the data for testing our hypothesis and building the model. 
The next is data exploration and cleaning, which helps us to remove the outliers, missing values, and then transform the data into the required format. Fifth step is modeling, where you actually build the machine learning models. And in the last phase, we deploy our models. Machine learning problems can be divided into three broad classes, namely supervised machine learning, unsupervised machine learning, and reinforcement learning. Supervised machine learning is one of the most basic types of learning. In this type, the machine learning algorithm is trained on labeled data. Even though the data needs to be labeled accurately for this method to work, supervised learning is extremely powerful when used in the right circumstances. Human teaching machines is called supervised learning. Instead of manually writing down exact rules to do the classification, the point in supervised machine learning is to take a number of examples, label each one by the correct label, and use them to train an AI method to automatically recognize the correct label for the training example, as well as any other image. This, of course, requires the correct labels are provided, which is why we talk about supervised learning. Supervised machine learning problems can be again be divided into two kinds of problems, classification problems and regression problems. Basically, learning without a teacher is unsupervised machine learning. There are times when you don't want to exactly predict an outcome. You just want to perform a segmentation or clustering. Whereas the task in unsupervised learning is, is to discover the structure of the data. It holds the advantage of being able to work with unlabeled data. This means that human labor is not required to make the data set machine readable. There are no labels or correct outputs. One of the types of unsupervised learning algorithm is k-means clustering, which is used to solve the clustering problems in machine learning or data science. Reinforcement learning. It is said to be the hope of true artificial intelligence, and it is rightly said so, because the potential that reinforcement learning possesses is immense. It is a slightly complex topic as compared to traditional machine learning, but an equally crucial one for the future. It is commonly used in situations where an AI agent, like a self-driving car, must operate in an environment and where feedback about good or bad choices is available with some delay. And it is also used in games where the outcome may be decided only at the end of the game. So let's frame this idea in terms of a video game. Say we have a computer program that plays the game Mario. It learns to control the character receiving feedback from the environment in the form of a changing screen based on the successes or failures of our algorithm. It can learn to interact with the environment and improve by using the feedback it receives. As humans become more addicted to machines, we are witness to a revolution that is taking over the world, which we will be the future of machine learning and artificial intelligence. So here is another poll for you all. Please open slido.com and write the code 247688 and choose the most suitable option. The question for your poll is, can you identify image recognition will fall under which category? Please be first. You have 90 seconds to answer this question. Only 24% were able to guess the correct answer. The correct answer is unsupervised machine learning. Hopefully, most of you will get it right next time. Now, let's see how AI ML continue to make our lives easier. The first is self-driving cars. Self-driving cars require a combination of AI techniques of many kinds, such as search and planning to find the most convenient route from A to B, computer vision to identify obstacles, and decision-making under uncertainty to cope with the complex and dynamic environment. Each of these must work with almost flawless precision to order avoid any accidents. The second is image and video processing. Face recognition is already a commodity used in many customer, business, and government applications, such as organizing your photos according to the people, automatic tagging on social media, and passport control. Similar techniques can be used to recognize other cars and obstacles around an autonomous car, or to estimate wildlife populations, just to name a few examples. Space exploration. Intelligent navigation systems, 
AIBs, assistants, and robots, the first image of black hole space debris solution has been possible only with the help of artificial intelligence. Continuing the applications in gaming, AI makes gaming smarter than ever, making them more real and enhancing the overall gaming experience. AI makes mobile games smarter with AI in gaming. In healthcare, to predict ICU transfers, provide faster service, diagnosing issues, analyze data to identify trends in diseases and genetic information. In education, automating AI is also contributes to making online testing more secure and allowing facial recognition that keeps students' attention in lectures. Different tasks include administrative work, test evaluating, and grading. Well, Jay, I was thinking of starting a business in the future. So could you explain where AI ML will be helpful to me or in general to any business? There are many prominent benefits of AI that can help businesses grow. It helps to increase organizational performance, reduce operational cost, launch innovative products, meet customer expectations, and last, introduce new lines of revenue. Now, let's have a look at something really cool and mind-blowing. Here's a clip of the Atlas, a product of Boston Dynamics, which is an American engineering and robotics design company that changes your ideas of what robots can do. As you all could see, this robot can perform human movements and honestly saying quite better and balanced than humans. It understands obstacles and can jump on or over them with significant ease. Now let's come to the question that we are sitting in your mind for long. Why should we use Python for AI ML programming? AI ML projects differ from traditional software projects. The differences lie in the technology stack the skills required for an AI-based project, and the necessity of deep research. To implement an AI ML aspirations, we should use a programming language that is stable, flexible, and has tools available. Python offers all of this, which is why we see lots of Python AI ML projects today. Benefits that make Python the best fit for machine learning and AI-based projects are Python, is simple and consistent. It has an extensive selection of libraries and frameworks. It is platform independent and is flexible. And lastly, it has a great community and it's very popular. So let us take up a question from our audience. Okay, the question is, Julia, a new programming language has boomed the data science field. Can Julia overtake Python in the upcoming years? Julia is a high level, high programming and dynamic programming language. When compared to Python, Julia outpaces Python in its high performance and high speed. But since Julia is a new language, it does not have an extensive selection of libraries like Python and the community is relatively small. Prediction of replacing Python with Julia is relatively small, but in my opinion, both of these languages will be a mainstay for data science in the near future. K-nearest neighbor, also known as KNN, is a supervised learning algorithm that can be used for regression as well as classification problems in machine learning. The nearest neighbor classifier is among the simplest possible classifiers. When given an item to classify, it finds the training data item that is most similar to the new item and outputs its label. It is also called a lazy learner algorithm because it does not learn from the training set immediately. Instead, it stores the data set and at the time of classification, it performs an action on that data set. KNN works on a principle assuming every data point falling in near to each other is falling in the same class. In other words, it classifies a new data point based on similarity. 
Its purpose is to use a data set in which the data points are separated into several classes to predict the classification of a new sample point. KNN is a non-parametric algorithm, which means it does not make any assumption on underlying data. So here is again a poll for you all. Please open slido.com and write the code 247688 and choose the most suitable option. The question for the poll is, can a KNN algorithm be used in climate forecasting? Please be first. You have 60 seconds to answer this question. Great, you all guess it right. KNN can be definitely used to forecast the weather. Let us jump deeper inside the concept of nearest neighbor method by relating it with something which is a significant part of our daily life. Have you ever wondered how music apps like Spotify and Savan play the exact song according to your mood at a particular moment? AI applications are commonly used in predicting user behavior and generating recommendation systems. The idea is to use the very same principle that users with similar past behavior tend to have similar future behavior. Let's say you have recently listened to Honey Singh's old album. One day, the service provider gets their hands on a song by a very underrated artist who makes similar type of music and decides to add it into your library. Now, how will the system predict whether you will, you will like it or not? One way of doing this is to use information about the genre, the artist, and the other metadata entered by the people working at the service provider. But factually speaking, this information is relatively scarce and rough. So it will only be able to give blurry predictions which isn't something that Spotify would do. What current recommendation systems use instead of the manually entered metadata is something called collaborative filtering. The collaborative aspect of it is that it uses other users' data to predict your preferences. The word filter here refers to the fact that you will only be recommended the music that passes through a filter. Music that you are likely to enjoy will pass, whereas the unpreferred music will not. Now, let's say that other users who like Honey Singh's music also enjoy Badshah's music. The system will identify the similar behavior that you and other fanatics share. And since other users also enjoy Badshah's music, the system will predict that you will too. Hence, it will show up at the top of your recommendation list. But let's be real here. There is also a fair possibility that the added song is not so great and other users with similar past behavior as yours don't really like it. In that case, the system wouldn't bother recommending it to you, or at least it wouldn't be at the top of your recommendation list. So now you know how Bacha's Pani Pani pops up inside your Honey Sings music marathon. Okay, the main objective of in this section is to learn another example of supervised learning methods, which is almost as simple as the nearest neighbor classifier. The basic idea in linear regression is to add up the effects of each of the feature variables to produce the predicted value. The technical term for adding up the process is called linear combination. Linear regression is a linear model, which means it assumes a linear relationship between the input variables x and the single output variable y. More specifically, y can be calculated from a linear combination of input variables x. A linear combination can be further divided into two types of algorithms. First, a simple linear regression, and the second is multiple linear regression. If a single independent variable is used to predict the value of a numeral dependent variable, then such a linear regression algorithm is called simple linear regression. And if more than one independent variable is used to predict the value of a numeral dependent variable, then it is called multiple linear regression. Why don't we dive deeper into the concept of linear regression and understand it with the help of an example. So let's take a problem statement in which we will predict the price of houses taking the input as square feet and determine mean absolute error, 
mean squared error and the root mean squared error and predict the price of the house if the square feet of the house is 995. Here, some of the terms may be new and unknown to you, but as we go through the question, I'm sure you will understand and grasp them. There are also some missing code blanks here, but don't worry. You will all fill the code blanks when we will write the code. Just be along with us. Let's start by importing some packages and classes in order to efficiently run our code. The first package we are going to import is NumPy, which is used for complex mathematical operations. To import NumPy, we write the statement import NumPy as NP. Similarly, we will be importing pandas, an important Python package for data manipulation and analysis. Next, we have matplotlib, which is used to show data visualizations, that is to plot the graph. Then we have a scalar linear model package. We are going to import the linear regression class to make and train the model. From sklearn, we are going to import metrics, which is used for performing statistical calculations. And finally, we are going to import the train test split from sklearn model selection, which is used for training and testing of our data set. Let's understand how to code and solve a problem. First, we are going to read the data from the CSV file using the pandas package method, read CSV function. Now let's explore our data set. If we want to see the first five rows and columns of the data set, we use the head function. In order to ensure that we have the original data set safe with us, we create a copy of it using the function copy function. How can we see the total rows and columns in our data set? Simple, we do it by using the shape method. See, in our case, we have 578 rows and two columns. Now that we have seen the number of rows and columns, let's get to know their names. J, can you please tell us about it? And also, can we rename them? Yeah, sure. To know the names of our columns, we use the column function. Here, we have price in dollars and square feet. And to answer your question, yes, we can rename them. We can rename the column from price in dollars to price. We use the rename function from the pandas package. And let us also see the last five rows and columns of our data set using the tail function. Can you all see that there are some values denoted by NAN? This means not a number or in simple terms, we can say null values. The question that comes to our minds is how to handle these null values. The efficient way of dealing with null values is using the drop any function. It drops all the rows that contains the any n values. Let's check what happens after we apply it. By using the tail function, we see that Okay. So by using the tail function, we see that row numbered as 574, 575, 576, and 577 have been removed from the data set. Now let's come to my favorite part, which is graphs. 
Visualization of data is done with the help of graphs and the main aim of plotting this graph is to check the linearity. We will now plot our data frame using the plot function on a matplotlib package. We will select x-axis as price, y-axis as square feet and select the scatter plot. To label our y axis and x, x axis respectively, we use the x label and y label function. We label the x, la x axis as price by using the x label function and y axis by using the y label function. Let us give a plot some name. We'll give, we will give price versus square feet by using the title function for a plot. How about we add some finishing touches to a plot? We'll use the grid function to do so. To see a wonderful plot, we use the show function. Here, we can see the values of the plot are concentrated linearly. Finally, we can conclude that linear regression will be applied to our data set. Why don't we find out the independent and dependent variables in this case? And with it, we can also learn about them. Square feet is an independent variable here because it does not depend on anything else or any other variable. But when it comes to price, it is a dependent variable. Can you think why? Because price of a house is only determined by the square feet. So it depends on square feet and this is a dependent variable. Now that we have figured out the type of variables, we will select the columns individually and turn them into their respective NumPy array. Now, this is where the machine learning concepts kick in. We will split our data set into the ratio of train is to test, where some part of the data set will be trained and the remaining will be tested. Here, we split our data set into the optimum ratio of 80% train and 20% test using the train test split function, defining the train size as 0 0.8 and test size as 0 0.2, and defining four variables, x train, x test, y train, and y test. We we split our data set into training and testing to evaluate our overall performance of a model, which, is, which will be discussed in the later stages of a model building. Finally, the time has come to make a linear regression model. We will take a variable regressor to make the model and the fit method to fit the values of X train and Y train on the model.
Okay. To find out the intercept of the model, we use the intercept method and the coefficient can be found using the coefficient method. Let's apply this. We might see some large values. They are important to check the model. J, how can we predict the price of the house? Oh, it's easy. We will use the predict function on X test and store it in a variable called YPred for ease of use. Further, a dictionary will be created consisting the actual values in y test and the predicted values in y pred. We will get a copy of the given array into a single dimension using the flatten function on each of these variables. This dictionary will be stored in a data frame for an ease of use. Oh, wow. Now, why don't we check our model graphically? We will draw a scatter plot of X test and Y test. And to enhance it, we will use the color function and apply gray color. Then we will plot another graph of X test and Y predicted on the previous plot and apply red color to it and an argument of line width of two to make the regression line bold. As usual, finishing up the graph using the grid and showing the plot using show function. Here, we see a red straight line. The straight line here denotes the algorithm we used is correct. Drew, the graph and the algorithm looks great. Let's understand some of the terms to see the overall performance of a model. We come across the term absolute error, but what does it actually mean? An absolute error is the amount of error in our measurements. It is the difference between the measured value and the true value here denoted by y test and y pred values. Next, we have mean absolute error. This is the averages of all absolute error. And what actually is mean squared error? It tells us how, a, how close a regression line is to a set of data points. The next is root mean squared error. It is the root value of mean squared error. I request everyone to please code along with us. I hope everyone is with me. I hope so, Jay. Now, we have to predict the prices of the houses using square feet. We will ask for the input from the user and we will convert the variable to float for mathematical calculations.
using the model regressor we will predict the value of the price of the house and print the result Yes, we have predicted the price of the house if the square feet is 995. And with this, we are finished with our process. Okay, in this, we have analyzed the whole problem statement using various concepts of machine learning, data visualization, data analysis, and statistical knowledge. Okay. So there was a question asked while we are explaining the graph from the audience. Let us have a look at it. In the first graph, there was IE6 written on the x-axis. Can you tell us what it means? It is a standard scientific notification. And here it indicates an overall scale factor for the x-axis. It is used as an abbreviated number of the axis, which denotes that the numbers written on the x-axis are in the terms of exponent to the power 10 to the power 6 exponent. So here is a poll for you all. Please open slido.com and write the code 247688 and then choose the most suitable option. The question for the poll is, what is the common use of linear regression? Please be fast. You have 90 seconds to answer this question. The polls is over. Great. 82% of you were able to guess the correct answer. The most common use of linear regression are all of these. I'm sure that you might have noticed that we use some of the concepts of machine learning while solving the above problem. Linear regression is an important part of the machine learning field and is truly the workhorse of many artificial intelligence and data science problems. It has its limits, but they are often compensated by its simplicity, interpretability, and efficiency. Linear regression has been successfully used in the following problems. To name a few examples, prediction of click rates in online advertising, prediction of retail demands for products, prediction of box office revenue of movies, prediction of software cost and insurance cost, prediction of crime rates and real estate prices. Have you ever wondered what is the key technology behind driverless cars or what enables them to stop and recognize a stop sign or to distinguish between a pedestrian from a lamppost? Well, the answer to this all is deep learning. It is the key to voice control in consumer devices like phones, tablets, TVs, and hands-free speakers. Deep learning is a machine learning technique that teaches computers to do what comes naturally to humans. It is getting a lot of attention lately because it is achieving results that were impossible to do before. In this, a computer model learns to perform classification tasks directly from images, text, or sound. Deep learning models can achieve the state of the art accuracy, sometimes even exceeding the human level performance. Models are trained by using a large set of labeled data and neural network architectures that contain many layers. So here is again a poll for you all. Please open slider.com and write the code 247688 and choose the most suitable option. The question for the poll is, with the help of deep learning, can we solve the problem of prediction of protein structures? Please be fast. You have 60 seconds to answer this question. Oh. Wow, 94% have guessed it right. Protein structures, prediction of protein structures can be solved 
with the help of deep learning. The next topic, neural networks attracts much more interest because our own mind emerges from the neural processing of our brain. So Dhruv, what exactly is neural networks? To better understand it, we will start by discussing the individual units that make it up. A neural network can mean either a real biological neural network, such as the one in your brain, or an artificial neural network simulated in a computer. It is a series of algorithms that endeavors to recognize underlying relationships in a set of data through a process that mimics the way the human brain operates. In this case, neural networks refers to systems of neurons, either organic or artificial in nature. Neural networks can adapt to changing input, so the network generates the best possible result without need to redesign the output criteria. Some of the examples of neural networks are image recognition and handwriting recognition. Hey, Drew, what, what is so special about neural networks? Basically, the goal of neural networks is to build human-like intelligent AI models. So, Jay, what do we do to build flying machines? We don't build airplanes that flap their wings or that are made of bones, muscles, and feathers, right? Instead, what we do is develop artificial neural networks where the goal is to build AI systems rather than to simulate biological systems. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Now that we learned its speciality, why don't we see its key features? Do you know that the first key feature is that in neural networks, the system consists of a large number of neurons, each of which can process information on its own so that instead of having a CPU process, each piece of information one after the other, the neuron process vast amounts of information simultaneously. Wow, that is amazing. Also, in neural networks, data storage and processing is not separated. The neurons both store and process information so that there is no need to retrieve data from the memory for processing. So here is a poll for you all. Please open slido.com and write the code 247688 and then choose the most suitable option. The question for the poll is, which of the following is an application of neural networks? Please be fast. You have 90 seconds to answer this question. Well, most of you guess it right. All, all of these are the applications of neural networks. Jay, have you ever interacted with any chatbots or you use smart assistants like Siri or Alexa? Yes, and you know what, Drew? The functioning concepts are based on the next topic, natural language processing. It is defined as automatic manipulation of natural language like speech and text by using software. So basically, NLP is a branch of artificial intelligence that helps computers to understand, interpret, and manipulate human language. This bridges the gap between human communication and computer understanding. So here are some prominent examples of NLP, which includes email filters, language translation, and data analysis, search results, and smart assistants like Siri and Alexa. All right, guys, here is the last poll for the evening. Please open slido.com and write the code 247688 and then choose the most suitable option. The question for poll is, NLP is considered with the interactions between computers and human natural languages. Choose whether the above statement is true or false. Please be fast. You have only 60 seconds to answer this question. I request everyone to respond to our last poll of the evening. Oh, great. Most of you were able to guess that the above statement is true. This is because NLP has its focus on understanding the human spoken and written language and converts that interpretation into machine understandable language. So that was all from our side. We would like to thank all our enthusiastic participants for listening to us patiently. Now, 
we would like to entertain some more questions from the audience side please write your questions in the chat box to akshat khandelwal also to the people who have asked for the python file don't worry we will send you as soon as the session finishes we have a question from the audience side so the question is which of which is better supervised ml unsupervised machine learning or reinforcement learning using this machine learning methods is quite situational supervised machine learning is used with labeled data unsupervised is used with unlabeled data and reinforcement learning is used with no predefined data while talking about the aims supervised machine learning is used to calculate the outcomes unsupervised machine learning is used to discover the underlying patterns and reinforcement learning is used to learn a series of actions so there is nothing like supervised and supervised machine learning is better than unsupervised and reinforcement or vice versa every type of machine learning depends on the problem statement so here is another question from our active participants what are the future applications of ai ml artificial intelligence is definitely the future of the world ai and ml will drive the economy of tomorrow major sectors like financial sector automobiles and medical sectors are the ones to use ai ml to produce smart products that will reach the level of precision and accuracy currently not attained so we have another question from the audience side what is the minimum duration of learning python to make one proficient to use this in an organization if you are proficient in any one of the language it would not may not take more than one or two months okay so the next question is what is tensor flow and how it is used in ai <clears throat> so tensor flow is the open source library platform developed by the google brain team it is a math library used for several machine learning applications with the help of tensor flow we can easily train and deploy the machine learning models in the cloud hope i answered your question so the next question was what are the drawbacks of ml and how do we overcome it so some of the major drawbacks are possibility of high error that can lead to different outcomes and correct correct algorithm should be chosen for a particular ml problem okay so due to limited time we could only solve some of the questions rest all the questions will be answered in the chat box only for further queries please feel free to contact us this is me dhruv jain and me jay sarode signing off over to you shachi thank you so much dhruv and jay that was a wonderful session isn't it hope you all enjoyed learning about artificial intelligence and machine learning there will be another webinar of on integration of iot and cloud by mr mukuza sultan and ms akriti nagarya students of stme nmims indore on 4th july 2021 the registration link for the webinar will be shared in the chat box hoping for your active participation in our future webinars as well moving towards the end i would like to thank our director dr prachi khatri for providing us with the opportunity associate dean and convener of this webinar dr akil bangwala faculty team of the sunday tech series for their constant guidance and the organizing team for making this session possible also my special thanks to our knowledge partners equator a data analytics club of nmims indore 